I grew up here in, in Amsterdam when I was like uh, 10 or 11. I moved out of Amsterdam uh, to Wijkbedurstede. That's like in the yeah in the center of Holland. But uh, Amsterdam always, you know, played a big role in my life because like all the music was happening here, and I was already kind of focused on that. So every weekend I used to take the train and uh, come to Central Station, you know, and go here to buy records or check out parties. So like in school I was really focused on this Friday afternoon, you know, getting back to Amsterdam, seeing my old friends and meeting them. Huh. Yeah, so this, this, this used to be Fat Beats, actually, and um, it's a hemp shop now, not surprising, but uh, yeah. This is normally where all the records would hang in the window, you know, and then the guys would hang outside here and could get a little weed and then get inside, you know, start digging, digging for records and stuff. Well, still, still a lot of people uh, love vinyl and play vinyl, you know, especially like the house and techno DJs. Um, and in all the clubs there are always like Technics, so people are quite ed educated on, on playing vinyl, I guess. Also the DJs, you know, really love it. I love the way you can discover new music in, in a record store, you know, because it's all already sort of pre-selected. Yeah, I think I started doing first nights here in, in Bittersuit. It was really like a, like a place where we all kind of felt home, you know. It was run by friends and uh, we had friends behind the bar and you could just like do quite simple nights. It, it would fit like, I think, 300 people, so it's quite a small venue kind of has the feeling of a sort of jazz club, you know, in a, in a way. And I guess, yeah, I spent most of my, my first days as a DJ uh, um, here. Um, I visit like Milky Way and Paradiso a lot to check out like uh, performances or like uh, check big acts coming over. But it was more like a concert, more like a concert uh, hall, you know, like a, a different thing. This was really like sort of cafe slash little, little dancing club. I picked uh, this place because uh, like uh, the village where I came from there were no coffee shops at all you know so I uh, I always wanted to like smoke smoke a bit of weed when I came to Amsterdam you know and, and start digging for records and this was actually on the on the route via fat beats and the, and uh, bitter sweets to uh, rush hour so and if I think still have the best sort of weed in Amsterdam uh, I like it a lot I guess you, can, you really have to know which coffee shop have, have the better stuff and it also really depends on if you go for a hush or if you go for weed or marijuana, you know, it's like, it's a big difference, like the Moroccan shops mostly have better hushies than, than the other shops, um, but it's, it's, there are a lot of tourist traps, yeah, that's, that's totally right. Yeah, rush hours, for me, it's a real big thing in my life because it's, it's the record label I've been releasing most of my records, actually all the records I did. It was a funny thing because um, I used to go to Fat Beats and this, there was this kid working uh, named Kid Sublime. He was in the uh, Red Nose district, which was uh, a crew which I got to know when I moved to Amsterdam. And um, he was always working at Fat Beats and one day I came there um, and he wasn't working there anymore. And I asked him, Yo, what's happening and where, where, where is he at? So they said, yeah, he's, he's making music now and uh, he quit the work here at the record store. He just released his, his first record, I think. Um, you can get it um, at Rush Hour. And I was like, yeah, well, what, what's Rush Hour? Where, where, where is it set? And they explained, and we took, I took the same walk as we just did. And um, I went in there and I asked for that record. That was actually the first house record I ever bought, was at, at this shop too. And after that, I kept on uh, returning. And yeah, the rest is sort of history. So this is a uh, red light radio. It's, it's kind of new actually. I think they started out two years ago. It's uh, been run by uh, two friends of mine. And um, yeah, they, they actually the whole area kind of got changed by the government because they wanted to get like uh, the criminals and, and the crooks out. So they, they took, took away a lot of these uh, like uh, hoe houses, you know, whore houses. And um, they try to give it new um, yeah, new meaning to it by, by, by working with like creative people and stuff. So um, that's when this spot popped on. We, like there's not been like a real big tradition in, in making like underground radio in Holland, I, I guess, if you compare it to England, for instance, uh, there are a lot of pirate radio stations. Uh, that's, that's, not a, that's not a Dutch thing at all. So I, I guess for the music scene, it was, you know, really, really good to uh, have a station like this. 
where like all the underground people and organizations can can like broadcast their taste in music. Two pack in the back. Yeah. Me and Abel, who run the store, we started like kind of uh, one and a half year ago, and uh, it was a bit of a risk in the beginning. We thought like, who's if it's gonna work out and stuff. Put a lot of effort in getting uh, obscure records, strange records. Basically we do everything. We have like funk, soul, disco, rock, Latin, Afro, wave. So the whole scope of music. And uh, also we have like kind of house records and re-edits and 12 inches. And uh, yeah, but in, in the genres we try to find like kind of the good stuff or the stuff that we like. Yeah, this was an amazing opportunity through Orfeo from Red Light Records who rents the whole complex, or like kind of runs the thing. And he said like, Taco, you wanna start a record store there? Maybe it's a good idea. And I was like, yeah, it might be a good idea. So then we just like decided to do that. And yeah, it just goes, it's nice. Now this is a little snack bar you can get in real fast, in and out. You need to have your food in like 15 minutes and then be gone, otherwise they ask you to leave, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a real nice place, it's, a, it's, it's for Thai. I think uh, I can recommend this place the, the most from Amsterdam, yeah. I like it especially, you know, that they make it in front of you and serve it real fast, you eat it and you fuck off, you know, it's like a, a different thing. <laughs> Got me, got me, got me, got me, got me.